Hey everyone, I'm joined by Tom Peterson, distinguished engineer at NVIDIA. Thank you, sir. Thank Quite you. a prestigious yeah. title. Well, it seems prestigious, yes, thank you. <laughs> it seems prestigious. So Tom just got off stage here at a press event talking about overclocking for the new GPUs, including the 2080 and 2080 Ti. Yes. Uh, well, we did. We just uh, launched our Turing products, and we had our editor's day here. It's great to see you again. And I'm really excited because we, we introduced a bunch of new things, including something called the NVIDIA Scanner. And the NVIDIA Scanner actually makes it possible to do one-click overclocking. So a lot of new stuff. Before that, this video is brought to you by the NDXT E-Series Power Supplies. The E-Series PSUs are high-end power supplies with real-time digital voltage and temperature monitoring, per-rail wattage measurements, and data logging functionality for power usage. The E-Series PSUs also come with a 10-year warranty all the way down to the 500-watt unit, and they run fully modular and with silent fan operating modes. Learn more at the link below. So we've, we've heard this a lot. Uh, one click overclocking. One click overclocking. I've been hearing this for a long time. Since you were a, a wee tyke. Something like yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, one click overclocking. Most of the time, in recent years, it's gotten a lot better, I'll say. Yes. So we've done some man versus machine things where I'll overclock, we'll let it overclock. It's pretty close. Yeah. But, I mean, sell me on it. Why, why should I trust it to handle it this time versus last time? What's well, different? Fair enough question. Well, I can tell you what's different this time is uh, NVIDIA is doing it. So we've developed all the logic. It's divided into two main chunks. One is called the test program. The other one is the test load. And the test program kind of knows about how does our voltage frequency curve look. So it knows exactly which voltage points to test to make things go really, really quick. And then since we can control the voltage exactly, because we're NVIDIA, you know, we can control that stuff. There's no variability caused by games or load. On the load side, it's a mathematical test that we develop to exercise our GPU precisely. So we can modulate that load based on the power or the temperature and effectively think of it as if you could get Jonah to like overclock your GPU for you and write giant programs to do it, this is what he would do, right? And this is, it, it, if you watch the thing, it steps at one voltage, runs a bunch of tests, steps at another voltage, runs a bunch of tests, and it delivers a high quality curve in about 20 minutes, so. And this, just to, to be clear here, there is an OC scanner program, or there are a couple of them at least, yeah. previous generation. How is this different from those? Well, what's different is this doesn't crash. It doesn't, it doesn't like TDR, it doesn't, it doesn't fail because we're looking at a data comparison and that data comparison we can detect errors in far before we see any other like visual or, or Windows corruptions. Um, the other thing is, of course, we know how our VF curve looks, so we know which points to like go after. So we're actually focusing on five different voltage points and interpolating between those voltage points to generate the kind of final curve. So it's like all of the knowledge that we have in our chip team and our board team and our architecture team has been compressed into this test structure and our test load. And then you know I have to bring up voltage, of course. I think on the in your presentation, I think we were seeing something like, uh, what did it stop at? Twenty-one thirty and twenty-one thirty and one point zero something volts. I don't remember the exact. One point zero six something. <laughs> one point zero six eight. Top of my head. Yeah. yeah so, uh, so you're into voltage. Uh, yes. Right, yeah. Yes. And that's why I have the question. Uh, voltage. I, I guess the community decision on this is that it's been locked. Is mm. the, the the phrasing I'll use. So tell me why I'm wrong. Ah. Well, you're not wrong. Voltage is, in fact, controlled and restricted. But um, I think you're, the, the reason the community is unhappy, I believe, is that they feel like the voltage is nefariously locked, right? That, that NVIDIA is locking this for poor reasons. But the truth is, we know exactly how our silicon behaves. And we set our voltage limit, uh, like the peak voltage that we run at, is set to be reliable so that we can run at that voltage for many, many years. Five years is typical. Now, as you increase the voltage beyond that, um, we're gonna start having fallout, meaning that some chips are just gonna die. So it's our, our kind of obligation to help gamers n not blow up their cards. Everything else on that, that UI for overclocking is non-destructive. It doesn't void warranties. We don't have like, oh, tracking if you over voltage or not. So what we're kind of trying to say is we want to make sure that people can enjoy overclocking, they can experiment with it, but they don't blow up expensive graphics cards. Voltage is the one thing that will blow up the card. 
That is accurate. That yes, is true, that right? Is accurate. You can play with the power, you can play with the temperature, you can play with the offset. All of that is non-destructive. But the voltage will not just perhaps blow it up right away, but it'll also for sure degrade the performance of the chip over time. So as kind of a, a, a promise to our end users, it's overclocking is free and it's safe. And if we allow them to slide a voltage slider where you know suddenly they're going at 2x the voltage, we're going to get a lot of surprised and unhappy uh, gamers. I'm going to give you one more opportunity to yes. tell me why I'm wrong before we move on to ah. Boost 4.0. Oh, okay. So the next one, why is the voltage slider from 0 to 100% offset in Pascal or I would assume Touring cards, why is that not a placebo slider? Ooh. Well, it does what it does. I mean, what that percentage means is how much of the available voltage headroom is unlocked. So it doesn't necessarily say what voltage are you going to run at. It just says what are the new voltage levels that are available. So as an example, normally you're not running at your peak voltage. You're normally running lower because of temperature or power. So just sliding that slider up doesn't change anything unless you actually hit those voltage levels. So I think a little. sometimes people are a little bit disappointed about how many levels that actually unlocks because it's really only going to be a few ticks because we're going from five-year reliability to one-year reliability, and that translates into, I think, roughly three more voltage steps on most of our cards. So it's not placebo. It's just... You know, I, I want to be responsive, but I just don't want people blowing up cards. So it's like, Neh. yeah. But I think we talked earlier, and, I'm, and, and I know you would like a way to say, I'm an expert. I would like to play with my card. So give me a way that I can maybe go on a website, get a cookie, or maybe, you know, put a special USB key in. I can make it harder, but just don't lock me out entirely, is what you're saying. So I'm going to go look at that. But... Um, Right now, obviously, we don't have a change, but it's it's not something that we're opposed to. It's just, you know, we've got to find a way to do that without compromising quality. And if any of you, I guess, on that topic have a specific idea relating to that, I would love to hear it. let Tom yeah. know below. Actually, let you know, and then, you know, you can tell me. Yeah, but let me know below. You're going to make uh, me sift through the comments. No, no, I, well, yeah, no, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, you can tell Tom is, a, uh, is high up in the company when he is no, no. delegating that to me. You got it. Yeah. It's <laughs> so last question for you, a quick overview, uh, which is asking a lot, but Boost 4.0, what's changed versus 3.0? What are Give me the primary features that have changed. Okay, well, there's two things, big. One is that we have no longer had a hard temperature limit. So on Boost 3.0, you set a temperature limit, and that means that pretty much the card's going to stay below that limit. And if the temperature ever rises above that limit, then we cap all the way down to base clock, and we stay at base clock, let the fan ramp. That's our default behavior. You can slide the temperature slider up to kind of avoid that if you want uh, to allow a higher temperature, higher fan. On Boost 4.0, what we've done is actually created a plateau in that transition. So it doesn't go from uncapped down to base. It actually goes from uncapped down to boost. And it'll stay at boost for a while before the temperature goes a little bit too high, and then it'll cap down to base. So if you think about that, it kind of says Boost 4.0 is no longer like this cliff. It's more of a plateau, and we're going to allow temperature and power to rise up to a secondary limit where users can you know, say, I'd rather, I'd rather trade off lowering clock for lower temperature. Now, since that's such a user-centric decision, we've also enabled that curve in a new API. So the Boost 4 API allows end users to sort of dial in their own Boost algorithm. And that will, you know, you can imagine somebody says, I just want high perf, I don't care about loudness, or I want sort of a, a smoother transition between um, acoustics and performance. And that's really what Boost 4 is all about. Very cool. So there's your quick overview of that. Otherwise, we'll have articles online by the time this video goes live. So check the link in the description below for more information. Tom, thank you very much. Great to see you again, brother. For joining <laughs> me. And we'll see you all next time.